2022 was a good year for IVA. We had, um, we had well, first of all, our events were able to uh, be held with no restrictions, and the crowds came back, of course, and everybody had a really, really good time. I think this is one of our biggest depot days that we've had in, in years, and uh, we're already planning for next year because this year we tried to incorporate the Friday night uh, as part of that with the concert and some of the vendors set up. So that was a, su a success, we think. And so when we do our spring festival, we're going to do it as well on, on a Friday evening and all day Saturday. That'll be in 2023, um, probably around uh, mid to late April. Uh, 2022 brought some new homes to Iva, which is something that we haven't seen in years. I mean, 20 plus years. Um, and we're talking small growth, but as we've said before for Iva, we we feel like it's pretty good. Uh, we had about eight new homes. We have some that are still um, talking to us about building homes in 2023. We've got um, some permits that are open uh, for we're just waiting on construction to start. And so uh, this we feel like 2023 is going to be another good year for residential development on a small scale, but um, adding to our tax base and to our um, you know just our our population is great and and so the new families that have moved in are wonderful people and they are learning a lot about Ava's history and they want to a lot of times they'll come by here and we have a book um, that's written about Ava and a lot of times they'll pick the book up and and they'll learn about the town they live in so uh, it's good citizen good citizens moving in into our town um, we we had a good year uh, just with people you know wanting small town life you know people go about and shop here in uh, our, our our local businesses. We had some new businesses open up this year, which was great. And uh, we see that people do want to support uh, their small town local uh, businesses. Our farmer's market did great this year. Uh, we had some local farmers that have, have really done well at the farmer's market. And we have people that call all the time. When is, when is the farmer's market open? So people want to support um, our farmers market as well. So this year has been a great year. We we ended the year uh, on a sad note. We had a, the death of one of our council members just a few weeks ago, and we are still very heartbroken. And and uh, we don't we just don't understand how these bad things happen sometimes. But she was on council for almost 20 years and was uh, just a wonderful, wonderful person. Good Christian woman, and she really loved the town and and been here her whole life. And when you lose those kind of people that have been here for their entire lives, who know, who knew so much of the history and participated in a lot of the history of the town, they're just not replaceable. So we, we're still heartbroken and very sad, but as a result of that, we'll be having a special election uh, in just really a few weeks to, to um, seat a new council member for that particular ward. Um, it's sad, but at the same time, you know, we're, we're looking forward to bringing someone new onto the council. While we ended the year on, on a sad note, we can look back at all the things that have happened this year and be proud of it. And we've got our, our agenda set for 2023, and we're looking forward to continuing some of the things that we started in 2022. A couple of those things are the dime store project. We, we are we're going to fast forward that project and get it done this year. We still have some money left over in the earmark that Senator Gambrell got for us in the state budget. And uh, the next phase of that's going to be to upgrade the electrical and put a new HVAC system in. We've already got the roof replaced. And so now we're, we're moving on with that. Um, we were able to um, purchase some buildings down in the lower part of town uh, at, a, at a good cost uh, several months ago and we have been able to secure leases on all of those buildings. So uh, while the businesses have not opened up yet, we have four brand new businesses that will be coming to town and they are a pet grooming facility uh, and, and doggy day spa. Uh, one of them is a photography place where uh, they will be doing photography shoots for families and businesses as well as possibly getting into the t-shirt vinyl uh, uh, business. I'm not really sure what, what you call that, but uh, I know there's a need for that down here. Uh, we have a vape shop coming as well, and then a coffee shop. So uh, those are four brand new businesses that we'll be announcing really, really soon in 2023. Uh, we have a new barbecue restaurant that's going to be opening up uh, in early 2023 as well. It's going to be a uh, barbecue restaurant and a bar and grill uh, to go along with that. So 
those are very exciting things for us. And, and those are things that will be happening just in the first quarter of 2023. And we hope that sets the pace for the rest of the year. The new houses that were built, a lot of those uh, houses have been sold and the developers are ready to build more. And so we're excited to see what plans are going to unfold on that as well. Um, as far as uh, our downtown area, we, we want to see all of, our, all of our storefronts with something in them. You know, we want, we want to see all of our businesses uh, flourishing well, and, and we think they will because people love small town, and I think people love Iva as well. We always wanted to upgrade um, the Veterans Park. And we, we needed to move flagpoles. We needed to just move things around. And because our Thursday night concerts are, are, are attended well, and the flagpoles were sort of in the way of that. And we wanted to move the flagpoles and create this veterans, um, we call it our veterans plaza. But we wanted to create something that was more fitting for a veterans park instead of having a monument here, flagpoles here, and we just want everything in one place. And so we were able to secure donations and contributions from businesses, individuals. Uh, the county helped us out. We had some churches, and we purchased a new monument. And that monument was installed in uh, around Memorial Day. And that has been visited quite a bit. You'll see families out there taking pictures, and especially the family members of those whose names are on the, the monument. And, uh, but, but it is a classy uh, area. It looks great. It's a big black monument and uh, we're going to add some things to it this year. We'll add some flower pots out there and expand on it a little bit. But uh, that was a huge accomplishment and we're very, very proud of that. We're going to do something similar to that at the ball field. Um, that's a project that's going to be unfolding shortly. Um, we've talked about this before, but our ball field is going to be turned into a new complex for School District 3. They're going to um, be expanding their operations and, and bringing most of their staff into one building. They're bringing their buses down here. and But the ball field was, um, in its time, it was a different era than, than we're in now, but softball was a huge deal down here, a huge deal, and it was a weekly thing. And so a lot of those old ball players are still around. And there's some heartstrings attached to that ball field. And so uh, while we have to progress forward, with, with things. We do want to do something to commemorate the ball field, its legacy, its history, and what it meant and means to a lot of people in town. So we're going to be doing, uh, we're, we're working with the school district. They're sort of taking the lead on it, but we're going to be working with them as well uh, in developing a small area where there will be a memorial, so to speak, that will um, give the history of the ball field, what that era meant to the town, and the the legacy that that it that it leaves here, and so we'll be doing a dedication of that uh, in in 2023. Don't have a date yet, of course, but we're working with the school district on getting that set up. So it'll be similar to the uh, um, the Veterans Memorial, and that's going to be important to a lot of people. A lot of people are excited about the this new um, project that we're working on the school district. It's going to bring a lot of growth to the town. Just having that traffic on 81 is going to mean a lot to us. Um, it's going to help us hopefully attract new business along the, the 81 corridor. Um, traffic count is integral, you know that, and this is, this is going to be good for us. But at the same time, we want to, we want to preserve our history, so to speak. We're, we're not tearing anything down, but, but we are repurposing the field. And, but, but we are going to have this uh, memorial out there at some point. And part of that process will be bringing the library downtown. That's right. And That's where right. Where is that in terms of progress on that? Well, as far as I know, everything is still is still ongoing. And uh, we've met with uh, the county several times, the, the library board, the school district. And uh, I, th I think you'll see construction soon. And that's going to be a major, major, uh, it's going to have a major impact on our downtown. Uh, it's going to be a nice upgraded facility. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. It's going to, um, hopefully it's going to help with foot traffic on, on the, uh, the square up there. And it, this is something that, you know, we never thought, we never really dreamed of this happening. And it, it, it's just happened. And really, 
IVA and its people are the beneficiaries of this. Uh, this is going to be a great, great upgrade to downtown. Along with that, there are some other buildings downtown that we're working on. So over the next three to four years, you're going to see a great transformation in IVA's downtown. We have a new police chief. He's going to be sworn in today. We're, we're just minutes from a council meeting here. And uh, his name is Christopher Miller. He's a 25-year veteran of law enforcement. I uh, was with Greenville County and Anderson County and some other smaller agencies. He's got um, a good track record, very experienced, and uh, we are looking forward to uh, his administration and what he's going to bring to the town. He, he's excited to be in a chief's position in a small town. So uh, when, when we've talked to him, his ideas, his, uh, his way about doing things, his, his thoughts and what he wants to see happen here um, is really in line with the goals and the priorities of our mayor and council. And, and whenever they um, wanted to start interviewing and, and talking to um, potential chiefs, they had um, some priorities that, that they needed to address. And so I think this is going to fit in right with what they're wanting to do. The mayor and council um, has prioritized a few things for 2023. And of course, this is one of them, having somebody to lead that department. Um, in a small town, people depend on law enforcement. They, they, they want that double coverage. You know, the county has been extraordinary in helping us out fill the gap. We're also working with the county on uh, some sewer repair down here, which is going to be great. We need that. We have an old dilapidated system, and so they've reached out to us, and we're going to be working with them to, to uh, get the system uh, moving. We have I&I problems. Uh, small towns have those. Um, I guess every system, even new systems have them, but ours is pretty severe. So we're going to be working with them, and we've applied for uh, lots of grants to, to help with that as well. And so we hope to have some, um, we hope to hear something back from the state pretty soon. I think every town in, in Anderson County probably applied for some of these COVID funds um, to, for their water sewer systems. And so we did, of course. So we hope we hear back soon. Um, if we do, then we'll get the ball rolling on that quickly. Um, some of the other uh, goals and priorities of the council that like we've talked about is, is um, business recruitment, development, working and really partnering with the school district and the county on this library program. This is going to be great for us. We're so excited about it. And then um, just clean up in the town. We want to redevelop our code a little bit. We're going to encourage our citizens to clean up and we want to have nice clean yards and uh, we want Iowa to be a, a good clean city so that people do want to live here and will have pride in their properties. Some of these have not been updated in years. And so with, uh, with growth coming here, we want to make sure our code is where it needs to be for a small town, but also something that provides us with a good 10 to 20 year vision for what we want Iva to look like in years to come. That has to start now. And so I think that's, that is a major priority of the council going forward. And so we'll be doing that early in 2023, meeting with our planning commission and, and getting those folks um, on board with what we need to do. We don't want to be a huge town. You know, we want to maintain a small town atmosphere. People love the little small uh, town feel, the small town charm. However, we have houses that are aging. I mean, we have some houses that are well over 100 years old and they were not taken care of. You know, historic homes is one thing where you've had the upgrades needed and, and, and those kind of things. But we've got houses that are falling apart. And so we need a new inventory of homes here. Um, and and we need new homes to meet the, the projected growth in this area. Um, so it's not that we're trying to make Iowa a big town, it's just that we're trying to make sure the inventory is good um, for, for future uh, residents here. And then, um, you know, we, we are seeing where a lot of people are, are basically uh, redeveloping their homes. You know, we've got a lot of houses here where um, developers have bought them and they're tearing walls out and, and uh, put new siding on, those kind of things. So, and, and selling them as if they were new homes. We're in the corridor between Anderson and Augusta. We see a lot of traffic come through here. A lot of people are moving to the area who need to be between Greenville and, and Atlanta. Um, and so I was a great place for that. You know, we're not that far from the interstate. Um, you can head down to Hartwell and hop on the interstate in about 15 minutes. 
Same thing with Anderson. So, I mean, we may not have a major industry here because we don't have a direct exit off the interstate, but in terms of somebody locating here because they need to be close proximity, I was perfect.